हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू दी एपिसोड सिक्स ऑफ सोल इट सैटरडे आर टूडे इज गेस्ट केट शी आई वुड लाइक टू कॉल हर एज अ सुपर वूमन बिकॉज शी इज एवरीवेयर शी इज रॉकिंग ऑन द सोशल मीडिया प्लेटफॉर्म्स शी इज रनिंग हर ओन बिजनेस शी वर्क फुल टाइम एंड शी इज ट्रूली पैशनेट अबाउट द एरिया डेटा साइंस एंड एनालिटिक्स एंड करंटली एक्चुअली कॉन्जिक्यूटिव टू ईयर्स शी हैज बीन chosen as one of the top voices on linkedin for 2019 and 2018 for data analytics and data sciences so let's see her career journey how did she find the area she is passionate about and how did she manage to take the leaderships as well as to be everywhere like because she is an author as well so we will explore more about her as well as a couple of things about data analytics as well So welcome Kate on a Solid Saturday podcast. I really, really appreciate your time. To begin with, I would like to ask the question is like you know, uh, uh, when did you started the Data Kitted Weekly Challenge and how many winners did do you have so far? Okay, so I actually started the Data Kitted Challenge at the beginning of 2019, and I ran this as a weekly challenge. I did have to take a couple of weeks off, typically around the holidays, but I think it was about 40 winners. last year and then this year I've actually transitioned to a monthly challenge and we've only had one contest so far and we had one next year. question is you you I feel like you know always come up with some hashtags so first was like a hashtag make or monday or hashtag daily coding so why do you think those hashtags are important when it comes to any social media uh so the hashtag make or monday is actually not mine it was created by a few other people in the UK who have a project called make or monday that uh, i think that code that uk um and i think hashtags are really cool especially the daily coding because it allows people to follow the hashtag and then in this case they will always get updates in the news feed that's why i created the daily coding You are a founder of Story by Data, so tell something more about it. Actually, you know how when did you found it and uh, what it ex- exactly does. Yes. So I actually started Story by Data probably three four years ago, but I wasn't really active with the site, and it basically covers a couple of things. So there's a blog portion of it where I contribute as well as anybody in the community can contribute if they participate in the dedicated challenge. The other thing Story by Data does is that I provide um, data analytics and data science training on Tableau, Python, data visualization for corporations. Uh, the the cool new thing I started doing is I help companies that are innovating in the data science, analytics, artificial intelligence, machine learning space. I help them with their social media strategy, specifically on LinkedIn. So basically helping. a company that has a really cool artificial intelligence product that they'd like to get brand awareness around or really you know help taking this to market this is something i help companies with being an author actually you already published two books in the data analytics and uh, also you are writing two more books actually mothers of data science and one more so tell us something more about that when can i expect your Yes, yeah, so I think I do try to take on a lot, but that's really because I want to make sure that I use my life to its fullest potential. Um I know we have one life to live. I realized that early on and I try to do as many things that I like doing as possible. So yes, I do have two kids. I have two girls ages 3 and 5. They're actually upstairs right now. Um I work full time and I am starting this business story by data which is extremely fun and in addition to that I love running um marathons and ultra marathons so I think family support is extremely important because if there you know if your spouse or your family is not supportive of you it's always an uphill battle to get anything done so I'm you know truly blessed to have the, the support that I have it clearly shows your passion towards it so how when did you finally realize that you would like to work in the data field and uh, what steps did you take to pursue uh, my passion for data analytics came to me by accident actually because this happened in about um 2013 2014 time frame when i was still working in risk management and regulatory compliance focused on the financial services industry and i had to do a lot of work at the client side which included a lot of travel and extensive hours including nights and weekends I remember I was pregnant with my first child and I just could not think of you know missing all of those important milestones early on in in her life um so I negotiated a work from home role with my company at the time 
and they basically gave me a data insight strategy role where they gave me a database, they gave me Tableau, and they told me to provide insights. That was really my first step into the space, and I went into it with you know both feet. I jumped in, jumped into that deep end pool. Um, I think I'm still learning something new every single day. Um, but that's when the passion, you know, was born really almost at the same time as my first job. Any data storytelling tips you would like to give to the audience? Because I know that you have written one course as well in the Tableau. So any data storytelling tips I would you like to give? Yes, I think um, data storytelling is a skill that you can learn. I think practice will make you a lot better. So I think every chance you get, if you're working on a data project, Typically, the advice is, you know, take some data or scrape some data from a website, analyze that data and come up with a conclusion. I'd say, I'd say you should try to take it one step further and do a video such as I'm doing right now and record yourself telling the story of what you did. And I think that will help you get better. If, you know, it, it's even better if you have an actual audience you can practice some data storytelling with. Uh, but if not, like I said, you could do the video and then you can review it yourself. Maybe after a couple of times of reviewing it yourself, you can post it online and request feedback because that's how you're going to learn. When it comes to the Tableau, uh, we always talk about the dashboards. So when we create the dashboards, what are the important things that person has to take care while building? Um, I think for dashboards, you should always try to keep your audience in mind, right? You can create so many different dashboards, so many charts, so many graphs you can leverage, so many colors. Um, I think the ultimate purpose is identify what is the objective of your dashboard, and that is your starting point. So what are you trying to tell and who are you trying to tell? That should really sh drive your entire dashboarding um, uh, attempt, right? Because, so for example, if your audience A cares about one piece of the information you're going to share and audience B cares about something completely different, if you're presenting to audience A, make sure you target your message to audience A. Show them what they truly care about and what they need. How much is the quality of data affect when you prepare your Tableau dashboards? And uh, what are the uh, you know, preparation tips or data preparation tips or any specific data preparation tools that you use um, before creating the dashboard? Data quality is extremely important. That actually I'm getting a lot more into this where um, I'm, I'm learning a lot more about data quality and kind of how to proceed and I actually have a role in my company where I'm somewhat in charge of data quality in our customer relationship management tool and I'm noticing that data quality is an issue in every single industry and it's something that really needs to be addressed the, the earlier the better um, because you know the saying of garbage in garbage out we focus so much on data visualization and building these pretty dashboards but if the data we're working with is not clean or not important like it's if it's inaccurate then you're really just providing inaccurate information for decision makers and then they use that data to make inaccurate decisions so it's a full circle so definitely data quality is extremely um, important this goes back to my earlier message of targeting your dashboards for your audience and i've had to do a lot of that the key for me was to build a couple of versions of the dashboard that are using the same data but targeting the visuals to my audience I'll give you an example. If I'm presenting it to the business, um, I will use you know some high fancy charts that they can understand and quickly make a decision. Um, if I'm using or you know they're, they're more simple and straightforward, but if I'm if I'm presenting to the accounting or finance department, and you know they typically like to see tables and they like to see the underlying data and they like to see the full number, you know don't show it to me in thousands, give me the actual number. So I've learned early on that I need to prepare a couple of views for for the different I audience. feel like you always challenge yourself every year this year you challenge yourself that you will code every day so that's why you started the hashtag daily coding how much is it important when it comes to you know challenge yourself and take the right approach and when it comes to the new technology um i think when you're taking on any new challenge just take it one day at a time so the daily coding i'm actually hoping to go above the 365 days Let's see what happens um, in the new year. But I think I'm just gonna continue going because it, it's sort of become a habit now. Every single day I code and every single day I post about coding. Um, and I think that really helps to keep the ball rolling. What, what's really helped me is, and I forget who, I think it might've been Seinfeld, the, the comedian, 
who suggested this, um, develop something that can be continuous. I think what he had was a calendar on his wall and every single day he would tell himself to write jokes in a notebook. And if he would do that, he would put an X on that day. And um, as time went on, he had this huge chain of X's and he wouldn't want to skip a day because that would break the chain. So the tip is don't break the chain. What I have is instead of just posting on LinkedIn every single day, right before I post, I actually write this all down in a Google Doc. So every single day I have a Google Doc open and it's one consistent, almost like a book of daily posts. And it would just kill me if I had to miss one of those days because that would, in my mind, break the chain, break the habit, and then it's a lot easier to skip more days because you know, if you, you've already given yourself an excuse, oh, you know, I missed one day, it should be okay to just miss another. Um, so that's my advice there. To run the marathon in the NYU, so how big is that community and how do you enjoy um, it? So the running community is huge, I think, across, you know, across the country, at least. I'm, I'm not really too sure about it in the global sense of things, but I do know in the US, it's a pretty, pretty big community, especially when you look at trail runners and ultra runners. Um, in New York, the community is really big as well. I've actually recently joined this, um, this running group that organized a really interesting run that took place in the middle of the night. We're actually gonna do that again um, towards the end of July where we meet up uh, way up in the Bronx and then we run 28 miles down to Coney Island. Uh, it starts at one o'clock in the morning and then you run through the night and you hopefully get to Coney Island Beach by sunrise. And that, that we did that last year. I'm really looking forward to that again because I met a lot of cool people there. What do you think about these social media, media platforms and how do you look into it? Whether it is a, like, you know, whether it comes to the pros or finding out the cons of it. Uh, I think social media platforms can be really great or really terrible. So it all depends on how you use them. I think if you're just consuming content all day long and just kind of blindly, aimlessly scrolling through, you might not be getting as much as you can be out of these platforms. I think for me, especially LinkedIn has been so amazing in terms of uncovering opportunities and learning new skills, um, but also just sharing and kind of building a brand and building a community um, and meeting really amazing people. So in my mind, I think it's mostly pros, but I think it is easy to get sucked into um, just wasting time on social media. So I think it's all about how you- And to, you know, uh, coming to the close of this podcast, actually, uh, when we're talking a lot more about passion, interest, and taking the leaderships, how do you describe your leadership? The leadership style is, I like to make people happy and part of the team. So I think I have a collaborative leadership style. At the same time, I do think I like to have control over certain processes, but I'm actually working pretty hard on my delegation skills and trying to let go of things uh, because at this point at my company, Story by Data, I like to control everything and I'm, yeah, I'm working on, on the delegation. Any tips or advice you would like to give to the people to take the leaderships in the areas they are passionate or interested? Passionate about something, it's no longer difficult to do. Right. If you're passionate about watching Netflix shows, you're not going to say, oh, no, I don't think I'm going to watch this Netflix show tonight. You're going to watch the show. You're probably going to watch the whole season um, because it's easy. It's something you're excited about. It's something you're passionate about. And that's how I feel about running. I can truly run all day and I would feel super excited about it. I ran today and it's kind of not great weather. I think it's like 35 degrees and a high chance of rain but I still made it out to run because I feel so great while I'm doing it and I feel so great after. So I think the, the whole point is just pick what you're either good at or pick what you're truly enjoy doing and it'll be really the easy. last one is, you know, uh, get career advice to the students or any professional who are trying to shift their career in the data field or they are trying to grow in that particular data field. Any tips or advice would you like to give to the audience? Uh, my biggest advice is talking to people and also reading books. So I'm a big proponent of going to conferences, networking events, meetups, um, any, any social gathering where you can communicate and grow your network, including LinkedIn, you know, I, I see that as a, as a way of networking as well. Um, and then also self-investing into your knowledge via books or, you know, online courses if you're into that kind of thing. I do some of that as well. Um, 
but definitely feed your mind because that's, I think that's the way you're going to elevate your career. Plus the connections and network that you build, those are always going to come in handy. All right. I hope this helps. Thank you, Vaishali, for having me on this show. Thank you so much for being on Soul Lead Saturday podcast. I really appreciate your consideration and time. I know you are super busy actually. So uh, thank you so much. And I will soon post this, publish this podcast episode. And I will inform you as well as I will post your social media details as well. So that people who are interested to stay directly connected with you, they can directly connect with you on LinkedIn or any other social media platform. So thank you so much. And uh, all of you, hope you will enjoy. Until we meet, happy leading. Let's live together. Bye. Bye.